Hello, hello everyone and welcome. I'll just let the room fill for a moment as people are joining. You're all very welcome today. We're delighted that you're here with us. Hi everyone and welcome to the 2024-2025 Fulbright Irish Scholar Awards webinar. My name is Sarah West and I am the awards program officer here at the Fulbright Commission in Ireland. My pronouns are she, they, and I am absolutely delighted to be here with you all today. Thank you for giving us some of your time. So to kick things off, I'm going to talk through a bit about the program and then we will hear from one of our alumni who has joined us today and there'll be an opportunity for some questions and answers at the end. So do feel free to use the question and answer function as we go along and we'll pick up your questions at the end. So the Fulbright program was founded by US Senator J. William Fulbright back in 1946. And the program was set up in the wake of the first, the Second World War, excuse me, to address some of the um, atrocities that had occurred and as a global peacekeeping measure with the idea that through educational exchange with cultural aspect in mind, that this would bring about more mutual understanding and peace across the world. And at the time that it was set up, it was envisioned that only eight countries would take part but as you can see by 1957, Ireland joined the Fulbright program. And it wasn't until 1991 that the Irish Commission was set up as a um, it, bilateral agreement into law. And now by 2023, approximately 180 countries take part in the Fulbright program globally. There are 49 commissions like the Irish Commission across the world and the remaining uh, Fulbright programs are operated out of US embassies around the world. And so today I'm here to talk to you about opportunities for scholars. And when I say scholars, I want you to bear in mind that this means academics and professionals, artists and teachers for opportunities to go research, teach and lecture in the United States. And in the spirit of Fulbright, that exchange opportunity is extended to those in the US to come to Ireland to do the same. So what exactly is a Fulbright Award and what does it provide? There is a monetary grant to help you fund your research or your project in the United States. Then also there is the administration of your visa to actually get on the ground in the US. The commission will support you through that visa process. There's also accident and emergency insurance to help keep you safe while you're on your award offered through the program. And then there are some aspects that may not be so readily apparent from a grant, which are cultural and professional programming that you'll take part in pre-departure here in Ireland and also in the US when you're on your award. And the experiences that you have there, the memories that you create will last much longer than your grant duration. And again, this links you into the larger Fulbright network of alumni and connections that you will make on your award and carry throughout your lifetime. And that concept of an experience of a lifetime is something that we hear from our alumni again and again, that this is something that lasts much longer than the time that you're in the US. And just to say that the name of the Fulbright program really carries a lot of the weight of weight in the US. So once you mention that you are a Fulbright awardee or you're even curious about applying to the Fulbright program, this will begin to open doors for you. And the impacts that a Fulbright award Will have will not only just affect you but your family whether they're coming with you on your award or you've returned to them when you come home as well as your academic or professional community and your society community more broadly and again this network of peers that you will create you'll hear um, from our alum that this is something that you connect with and stays with you on your screen now you can see some images of our Fulbrighters, not necessarily doing their research in the lab or in the lecture hall, but out in society, engaging in that cultural exchange element, that education is not just necessarily academic or professional, but is cultural. And that is why Fulbright is such a unique funding mechanism. So I'll just talk you through now a bit about the application process. The first thing that you'll need to do is establish your eligibility for an Irish Fulbright Scholar Award. And the first thing to consider is that Irish awards are open to Irish and EU citizens who have five years residency in the Republic of Ireland. And so if for some reason you're not eligible to apply through the Irish commission, there are commissions and posts around the world, so you may be eligible to apply through them. 
And then unique to Fulbright is this rationale for needing to go to the U.S. So you'd be eligible for a Fulbright award if you can establish the strong rationale for why the U.S. What is that exchange element of what you will bring to the U.S. and what your institution in the U.S. will give to you to bring home? And why at Fulbright then should be, grant, be granted to you to uh, carry out your work? And just to note, part of the requirement of taking up a Fulbright award will be the two-year home rule visa requirement. And this is just a physical um, residency requirement following your award that you'll need to come back to Ireland for two years prior to applying for another immigrant visa or temporary work visa in the U.S. It doesn't preclude you from traveling to the U.S. Uh, for shorter periods of time, but just to bear in mind, you can learn more about this on our website or the State Department's website if you're curious. Also to note that uh, our applications are, um, you're not eligible to apply if you are a dual U.S. and Irish citizen, and you cannot be living in the United States at the time of your application. Also, you would be deemed ineligible if you have um, a lot of extensive experience living in the U.S. or studying in the U.S. Uh, prior to your application, usually about five years prior if you have a lot of extensive experience in that window. Um, you could get in touch with us uh, to let us know if you're curious if your experience there would deem you in ineligible. So an overview here now of our timeline. It's April, so there's some time now before our applications will open at the end of August. So once the application period opens, there'll be a window of two months to make your application from August until the end of October. Then once your application is submitted and the deadline has closed, Applications are then processed for review by technical experts in your field through November and December. Then in the new year, should those reviews be um, successful, you would be shortlisted for an interview. And then this is an opportunity to talk face-to-face, -face, albeit through a screen perhaps, that um, you get to talk more about yourself embodying the Fulbright ethos. We really wanna hear from you. You may not be speaking with an expert in your field. So again, this is an opportunity to speak about your work in a way that would um, speak to people who may not be as familiar, like it would be in the US. Perhaps someone may not be familiar with Ireland or your work, so how would you speak with them? And then following a successful interview, offers are typically made in March once the Foreign Fulbright Scholarship Board has approved our recommendations, um, then our offers are made. So looking at where we are now in April, what you can do in terms of actions today, tomorrow, in the coming months, we recommend you start to review information available on our website about all of our awards. And some will have more specific eligibility criteria, which I'll get to in a moment. So once you decide on an award, you'll start to think about maybe some host institutions that you might be interested in going to. And again, I'll talk more about this process in a moment. And then plan your project. Get into the nitty gritty of your research proposal. And a very important step, which uh, is an important thread to carry throughout this entire process, is researching what it means to be a Fulbrighter and what those Fulbright values and ethos are and how you could embody them through your work um, personally and professionally when you make your application. And then you'll register your interest on our website. And by doing this, we will then be able to send you the guidelines for the applications as soon as they become available. And then you'll submit your application. And along the way, you're always welcome to get in touch with us at any stage. So here are all the different categories available to, uh, from the Irish Commission for people to go to the US. Today, I'm specifically speaking about scholar awards and also what is available to scholars are unique to the Irish Commission. These are the Irish Tech Impact Awards. And these have a specific focus on information communication technology. I'll go more into this in a moment and also are the Fulbright Schumann Awards. And these are awards that are administered by our colleagues in the Belgian Commission. And they are opportunities for students and scholars to go to the US to focus on research um, and study and lecturing, specifically on EU relations and policy. And you can find out more about these. They open in December. Um, on our website, you'll find more information. And should those three categories may not be something that you're um, interested in, we also have our Irish Student Awards, and our Irish Language Awards, which you can find out more about on our website as well. So diving in more to the scholar awards, and again, scholar meaning academic and professional with five years experience. So you must possess a PhD or five years relevant experience, 
and these are the opportunities to go lecture, research, or conduct both in the United States. So you first have to establish your affiliation with an institution in the U.S. And when we say institution, this could be a higher education institution, or it might be a cultural institution or a laboratory. Um, you can get um, more diverse in what institution you may be interested in partnering with. And awards are typically from three months to 12 months in duration. And the maximum award that we would grant would be of 35,000 euro. And a little bit more about the Tech Impact Awards. These are for folks with three to five years professional experience or a PhD. And again, this is for non-commercial research, exploring the transformative power of ICT. So this might mean that you have a technology that you're working with in your field that you'd like to bring to a specific place in the US or with a specific uh, mentor, or there's someone in the US who you are seeking a technology from. So you can get a little creative in exploring how your discipline may not readily seem like it's a technologically based um, area, but there may be a linkage there to look into. And these uh, awards are very unique in the sense that they are of a shorter duration from two weeks to three months. And the maximum award for those would be 14,000 euro. So for the scholar awards, generally we have the all disciplines award category. That's what they're called. And they do what they say on the tin. They are for everyone in any discipline from artists, judges, uh, zoologists, lawyers, economists, everyone would fall into this category. And again, that's PhD or five years experience. And then with Within the all disciplines um, mindset, we then have awards, a separate um, fund that are sponsored by our partners. So different awards here you can see listed, and I know there's many here on your screen. They're all listed on our website as well. And they range from Enterprise Ireland, the Environmental Protection Agency, Geological Survey Ireland, Chagas, Health Impact, Creative Ireland. The list goes on here, and these again are considered um, if you when you're making your application think maybe first is there a sponsored award that i could fall into um, from from my background maybe looking at these partners websites to see what their values are their current projects maybe partnerships they have ongoing in the u.s um, and just to note that and highlighted in yellow are some awards sponsored awards here that were undersubscribed in 2022. So we would strongly encourage applicants to seek out these applications in yellow um, for the next academic cycle. So these are some of our sponsors here that you can see sponsoring our awards. And again, there's a wide range across all disciplines as well. And we'd recommend that you check out their pages, their work to see if there's any synergies there. And to note that when you make your application online, there is an extra form um, for the sponsored awards just to be aware of there. So now talking more specifically about the application and its requirements, just a, a high level overview here. All applications are made through the global Fulbright program online system called Slate when the awards open in August. You'll be putting in your personal details, uploading your CV, as well as your Fulbright statement, which is a unique document to the Fulbright program. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Your project statement, three recommenders from your professional network, samples of your work if you're an artist, and your letter of affiliation, which is a letter from the institution in the US saying that they wish to collaborate with you. And if you're considering um, an application and you're not sure if Fulbright is the right fit for you, we're here today to tell you that we seek applications from people from all different walks of life, all different backgrounds, all different disciplines, locations. Um, our hope is that the applicant pool for Irish awardees would really be representative of the body of society here in Ireland, and that that diversity would then be carried over to the US by our awardees to share in exchange in the United States. And the Fulbright program itself has various uh, groups for people of varying identities. You can see here on our screen some of the logos, and there's the links to these on our website. There's Fulbright Families, Fulbright Prism, Fulbright Noir, among many others, where you can learn about alumni from Ireland and other countries who come from many different backgrounds and have found a home in Fulbright. 
So speaking of diversity, when it comes to finding a host institution, this is something we ask folks to really open up their minds about and start to consider that Fulbright is not just a exchange between the big names, the big cities, the big schools and institutions, but perhaps an opportunity to seek out really where there's groundbreaking work, experts in your field, um, in places that may have been off the beaten path and uh, that, that space for cultural exchange to happen is really needed. And one way to go about identifying your host, we'd recommend talking and looking into our Fulbright alumni, both on the Irish side and the United States side. A Fulbright alum are always very happy to speak with folks. Um, and as well, maybe looking at the sponsors, as I've mentioned, their websites to see where their interests lie, perhaps in the US checking in with your colleagues and to really drill down to where there is a need and where your research makes sense to fit. When it comes then to preparing your application after you found your host, again, thinking about your work, the specific rationale for why it's Fulbright and then not another funding body, that aspect of cultural exchange that you're going to bring something and take something back and that the impacts from your work will go much more beyond the time you spend in the lab or the, the gallery, um, but impact your, your professional discipline and your, your communities. And now to talk about the Fulbright Statement of Fit, which is a unique piece to the application. This is not the space again to rehash your project statement or your CV, but this is to hear about you as a person who could embody Fulbright's ethos through your application and through your award. Um, to talk about your personal, professional motivations, your interests, um, what you hope to achieve, not just, again, in your research objectives, but what are your objectives as a cultural ambassador, as someone going somewhere in the spirit of, of William Fulbright to learn about another culture, um, to share your own culture and how you, you may go about doing so, and the benefit of what that means to you and the wider, wider community. So once you've submitted your application, you take a deep breath. This now then goes off for review. And should that be successful to the interview stage? And what you can see here on your screen, these blocks here, um, at the review stage, all aspects of your application will be reviewed. However, you can see here that a larger portion of that blue square is weighted on your academic record and your project statement. Then this will flip once your review is successful at the interview stage, we really want to hear about your cultural engagement, your leadership skills, who you are as a person, and not as much about the nitty gritty of your, your academic or professional project. So just to make you aware of some resources here as you work through your planning stages of your Fulbright application, there are Fulbright ambassadors located at higher education institutions across Ireland. We have their information on our website. You may have one at your institution that you're joining from today. We'd recommend that you reach out to them, as well as our alumni, which you'll find on our website. We have webinars just like these and alumni videos on our website and our YouTube channel for you to access and check back in your own time if you have questions or maybe want to learn more. And again, the different Fulbright affiliate groups may be a space where you could see more folks like you following um, their work into Fulbright. And just to leave you with a few quick facts, we have found that 90% of successful awardees have attended a Fulbright webinar or roadshow. So by being here today, well done, 90% of successful awardees applicants uh, have been here on a webinar. <laughs> and 50% of those who started an application but didn't complete did not engage in any supports, supports like these webinars or supports like the resources available online to you. Um, I really would love to highlight here that um, time spent preparing a application for Fulbright is, a time, is time well spent. It is a brilliant personal and professional exercise to go through, to think through that thread again of your role as a cultural ambassador, your role embodying the Fulbright ethos, to write that Fulbright statement about yourself, that is a worthwhile exercise. So there's no downside, regardless of the outcome for having gone through that exercise. And also to mention that the commission is very encouraging of repeat applicants. So should you not be successful in the upcoming award cycle, that does not mean you cannot apply again. We'd actually encourage you to apply again um, in another cycle. 
we often get more applications that are fantastic than we are able to fund and we would really love to see your application again and again to reiterate that the fulbright name carries weight reach out to folks let them know you're interested in fulbright that will open doors to you and that this really is a family of the fulbright alumni network the fulbright global community um, is one that you will become a part of from your award and onward in your life. So in terms of next steps, there's some here to take on your screen. You can follow us on social media. Any queries can go to awards at fulbright.ae. And one of the most important ones that we'll talk about today is talking with a Fulbrighter. And without further ado, I will introduce Joe McGraw, who is joining us today very kindly to share his experience as a 2021-2022 Irish awardee. Hi, Joe. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm really grateful to be here to chat to you today as a former Fulbrighter myself. Um, I attended one of these sessions, actually, um, when I was putting together my own Fulbright application. So I know how valuable um, these sessions are in, in helping you put your ideas together. Um, of course, I should say the whole team at Fulbright is incredibly helpful and supportive in responding to queries about the process too. I'm certainly very grateful for the help and support that Sarah and others have provided to me about the process in the past. So I've been asked to talk to you about my own Fulbright experiences, how I made contact with my host institution, and how Fulbright has impacted on my career. Um, I was a Fulbright scholar at UC Berkeley in California. And I spent four months there in the summer of uh, 2022, I think. And um, that visit was an incredibly fulfilling and rewarding and important professional experience for me. Um, from a research or a professional experience, I think this kind of trip is a really valuable way for us to disengage from the daily humdrum of university life, to rebuild and to get an unbroken run in a new environment. Um, so that we can reflect on our research and build foundations for a new project. The Fulbright brand, as Sarah was saying, uh, emailing someone to say you're a visiting Fulbright scholar helps you to reach out and connect with persons and develop relationships, contacts and networks too. Of course, uh, Fulbright isn't just a professional experience or a research trip. It's a vibrant personal experience that allows you to immerse yourself in the culture of the particular location you're visiting. Um, so I traveled uh, to California with my partner, Alfredo, and I know that many other Fulbrighters um, travel with their uh, partners and families and children too, so that you can have this shared cultural experience in the US. So, uh, and I can see the photos moving along here, um, that Sarah's pushing along. Um, with regard to Alfredo and I, we lived in um, San Francisco and commuted out to Berkeley for work. And so living in San Francisco was a really special personal experience for us. We lived in the Castro district and we were lucky enough to celebrate pride in San Francisco during that time. So this is the pic actually that Sarah has put um, up on the slide at the moment. We also made the most um, of our time to travel around California uh, to see sites like the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, which was the previous picture on the slide, um, and to go hiking in Ta Tahoe and uh, Yosemite National Park, for example. And that's another pic I've included. Uh, for Sarah uh, on the slide. Um, and so uh, we also took the chance then to visit further afield, uh, taking trips to Las Vegas and Hawaii and so on, and to, I suppose, experience very different kinds of locations and cultures uh, within the US itself. So as you can see, um, I was asked to send along a few pics of my Fulbright experience. Um, and rather than send pics of me in the library or sitting at a desk in an office or something like that, I sent along these pics. And uh, you've seen here pics of me at Pride and hiking and so on, because I thought those pics really reflected the really fun social aspect of Fulbright that sometimes is, is less obvious, actually. Uh, but that personal aspect, I believe, is, is really important. Um, I made so many friends in both the university and the local community um, in California and San Francisco and on my travels, uh, many of whom I'm still friends with today, actually, and some of whom have, have visited Ireland in the interim. So, so from both that professional and personal perspective, the Fulbright Award has been a really important highlight um, of my career so far. In terms of the application itself, I think it's really worthwhile for you to think through the project you want to do, why you want to research this particular area or topic in the US, 
why you want to base yourself in your particular host institution. Um, you might think um, if your project is under research in Ireland, is that somewhat different in the US? Are there particular scholars or research centers there that would be important to your work? Um, it's also really important, as Sarah was saying, that your research proposal is accessible. Could it be read and understood by someone who's not a specialist in your field, or maybe someone outside your discipline entirely? And so you might think, you know, to make sure that you're not using specialist jargon, you know, you could consider um, sharing your application with a friend or a colleague and see if it makes sense to them. And then you might also think about how you and your research both reflect Fulbright values. How do you demonstrate leadership and how would you be a good ambassador for the Fulbright program? And again, one further thing to bear in mind, and I know Sarah would have emphasized this too, um, is, is to remember that Fulbright is interested in more than your research. It's interested in you as a person, who you are and how you will engage with a whole variety of communities not just the research community. So don't be afraid to share a little bit of yourself, your personality, your interests, and especially um, if you get called to interview. Um, in terms of contacting my host institution, I approached the Centre for the Study of Law and Society in UC Berkeley. And that uh, university hosted that research centre, which supported my own uh, socio-legal work on white collar crime. And it also hosted a, a really prominent scholar in my field, Professor Jonathan Simon, um, who's an internationally prominent expert on the study of punishment. Um, so he had actually examined my PhD thesis and had written the foreword to my first book on white collar crime in Ireland. So when it came to my subsequent work on white collar crime in the US, I knew that he not only had the relevant expertise in the field, but that he would also be incredibly generous with his time in sharing that expertise. Now, you know, if you're thinking about where you're going to go and who you'll work with and collaborate with in the US, you might think that it's not always so easy to access senior faculty in US universities. But in my experience, US faculty are very receptive to connecting with researchers in their field, particularly potential full writers. And I also think that there is a particularly welcoming reception provided to scholars visiting from Ireland. So do try to find someone you can connect with, uh, who can shape and inform your research in a meaningful way, and who can help you connect to a broader community of scholars and others in your field. Um, in terms then of how Fulbright impacted me, I think it gave me the confidence and the credibility to help me to further develop my US networks, to connect in with academics, regulators, and others in my field, and also allowed me to immerse myself in US culture in various forms, for an extended period of time and to make friendships that I continue to maintain and appreciate. So that's it from me. I'll hand you back uh, to Sarah now. Joe, thank you so much. Uh, we're really grateful to hear from you today about your experience. It's so good to hear how um, not only professionally, but also from a community and cultural perspective, it was a really impactful opportunity for you. And nice to hear how receptive the uh, higher level staff were and that the Fulbright name was able to start some connections happening. So we would encourage everyone to use that as they're reaching out and making those linkages. Um, would encourage anyone now is your chance to pop any questions that you have to Joe or myself into the chat, uh, sorry, into the Q&A section. I can see that we've had two come in, so I'll just address those now. The first is about the letter of affiliation with an institution. And that letter, yes, it is it is just a um, the collaboration, um, a, le a letter stating that this institution is uh, happy to partner with you, that their um, research goals align with your own. Um, if you have the dates that you're looking to make your affiliation, eventually those will need to be included in that letter. Um, so you can you can pop uh, those into the letter. And um, also then we have, I hope that's answered your question a bit more about the um, letter of affiliation. Then for the Tech Impact Scholar Awards, we have a query coming in just to clarify a bit about who they're available to. And yes, so you could have a PhD and apply to a Tech Impact Award, or you could have three to five years of professional relevant experience. Um, and it, it says on our website that 
or a preference would be given to early career researchers with a PhD. So that is just to say that this is an opportunity for professionals and people at earlier stages in their career um, that we would be looking to uh, support those folks um, as a preference. I hope that that answers your question there. One more coming in, I can see uh, the time frame for which you have to avail of your award. So yes, there's the cycle through um, the start of the academic year. Really, you have to take up your award and scholar awards are for three months minimum to 12 months maximum. So you could go from August to August um, or you have your three months um, minimum. So that's the duration for the award. Anyone else have any other questions? Oh, I see one more coming in. Sure, I see a question. If you're uh, in the process of pursuing a PhD, um, but have significant industry experience, um, it would depend on how many years uh, experience you have in the industry. You could email us in with more specifics to awards at fulbright.ie, and we could always assist you in um, narrowing down your eligibility for which award you might be interested in applying to. So that's what I would recommend there. Do you have any other questions coming in? As always, if there's another question that comes to mind, you can get in touch with us on uh, email or our social channels to let us know. I see more questions here. Sure, there's a question about if uh, partners and children could come along and um, what's required at the application stage. Yes, um, there's options to mention if you would be taking any dependents with you and um, the process for that then is included in the application. There'd be more visa requirements depending on the length of time that they'd be coming, um, if it's over 90 days. Um, but certainly we have had Fulbrighters take their families with them and that also lends itself to another type of cultural immersion, bringing your family, engaging with families. You check out the Fulbright Families um, group. You can see the link to that on our website. Um, Postdoc um, experience is, yep, if you have your PhD, you would be a suitable candidate. And also we have a question talking about sponsored award categories. One second. Um, Sure, yes, so it's about the competitivity of sponsored award categories versus the all uh, disciplines category. Um, certainly the all disciplines category would have a larger breadth of uh, applicants, so that would be um, very competitive in a sense that there's a lot of applicants for the all disciplines. There's also a lot for the sponsored awards, um, but that those have specific criteria, so there would be um, a difference there in terms of who's applying. Um, I hope that that answers your question there um, about the sponsored awards. I don't see any others popping in at the moment. Wait, if there's any further questions, um, you can come to us um, at awards at Fulbright.ie. And we'd be happy to answer your questions there. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Joe and to thank Aoife for joining us today. Aoife is our communications officer who has made this webinar possible. And Joe as well, it's an honor to have you with us and to share your insights and your expertise. And to everyone for giving us some of your time today, thank you very much. Uh, a reminder that the awards will open in August. You can register your interest on our website and we can share the guidelines with you um, when they're made available. And we look forward to receiving your application. Take good care, everyone. Thank you very much.